Okay, okay, we're here today with Mr. Brady Beyer from Intercap Lending, and I thought it would be great to start my first podcast with you um, talking about interest rates, because that is all the talk right now in the industry, essentially, we are focused on how high they are, and, you know, affordability of housing has become a huge topic, and so we would love to hear from the experts about what's really going on out there. And thank you for having me. This is, uh, I'm excited to do this, and this is a topic that I'm very passionate about because there is a lot of talk right now in the market about, you know, is it the right time to buy? You know, payments can be a little bit scary right now, but, you know, we've got some great opportunities to, you know, assist with lowering those monthly payments and get okay. in while the getting's good. So let's, let's get awesome. to it. Okay, tell me, what are some of the things that you're seeing? First thing right now, home prices, home sales prices have declined a little bit. So these highs that we've seen the last few years, um, you know, we feel like we're kind of at the bottom of the market. So you can actually go buy a house on sale right now. I mean, if you're doing a normal 30-year fixed, you know, plain Jane vanilla mortgage, it doesn't feel like your house is on sale. But there are some programs that we can we can get that payment lower for you. Right. And I, I truly believe now is the right time because acquisition price is everything. I mean, yes, rates are, and payments are important, but even though the interest rates are higher, if you're saving fifty to 100000 on a house, it would take that you know, lower monthly payment many, many years, like 10 plus years for that to take into effect the benefit of the cheaper price. Right. And we are seeing prices kind of, some some homes are seeing major drops, some homes were just kind of seeing uh, the prices stick remain level. Mm -hmm. So you can look at that as a decline in, in terms of not having that appreciation that we would normally see. But I think everyone's also kind of looking at what's going to happen when rates come back down. And yes. what do you see is going to happen when that hap happens here in Utah? It is, there's going to be blood in the water. <laughs> the term that I keep hearing and I like is it will be frothy. Frothy? Frothy. So just what we saw during um, the pandemic, multiple offers, um, above list offerings, escalation clauses. What's happening right now is homes are sitting on the market a little bit longer. And whether or not that home has taken a huge price reduction, you have sellers that are willing to contribute some closing costs to help get the house off the market. Right. So we can't ignore that. Right. So even if you don't get the best deal of the century on a house, in most cases we are seeing sellers contribute closing costs and even you know temporary rate buy downs. Right. But the whole reason for that is is everybody is scared of the rates. Mm -hmm. So nobody's in the home buying pool right now. Everyone's on the edge. Waiting, waiting. Yeah. waiting for rates to drop and rates are very important but rates are temporary right acquisition price is permanent so if you're waiting for something to happen and you're ignoring um, the savings that you can occur right now you know right the overall it, savings yeah we need right. to look at big yeah. picture yeah so for example last year we're seeing people offer up to you know eighty thousand dollars over ask price not hard, in cash, yeah, right? And hard earnest money, non-refundable right. earnest money, no so you, protections you look built in. In terms of how much interest extra could you pay right now with this higher bit of rate for how many months until it comes back down to refi to get you to that eighty thousand dollar number or whatever it is? Um, it's that's a lot. That's a long time you could carry that rate before you reach that. Yeah, absolutely. So you the. Trying to say the cost, the waiting cost, it's gonna, as you mentioned, it's gonna take so long for you to catch up into what that purchase price savings would be. Right. Sometimes it doesn't make sense. Right. And most people only carry a mortgage on their house for you know, five years. Mm -hmm. So how long are you gonna be in that house? Right. So even if we look at, you know, we talked about we're projecting interest rates to come down. We don't know exactly when that's going to be. We know the Fed has some definite goals with inflation that they're trying to meet. But we feel in the next two to three years, there is going to be an opportunity 
to be lower than where we're at now. So. Yeah. And at that point, we'll be doing refinances. Yes. Right, left, and center. Okay. Well, that's pretty awesome. Um, I think you're absolutely right. I think we're, as far as my clients are concerned, we're seeing a lot more negotiation back and forth between buyer and seller. The seller is able to offer you know, closing costs or even helping them buy down the rate or a combination of both. Um, tell me what else you're seeing out there. Well, let's talk about, I mean, when you mentioned buy down the rate, there's two kinds of rate buy downs. You have the permanent buy down where we're gonna buy that rate down for the next 30 years. And investors are pretty savvy right now. I think most loan servicers and mortgage investors know that we're not going to have these rates forever. So if you're looking to buy your rate down long term, um, your money just doesn't go very far. It can get very expensive and you're not going to get much lower of a rate than what the market rates are because they know their opportunity to service that loan they're probably only seeing you know 12 to 36 months in servicing. Mm -hmm. So why should they give you a great deal doing a permanent interest rate reduction when you're gonna refi at your first opportunity? Sure. And then that loan's gonna go to someone else. Mm -hmm. So our most popular option that we're seeing right now is a temporary buy down. And that's where you're either buying it down for the first year, the first two years, or the first three years. Mm -hmm. And what I love about this is, is that it hedges the market both ways. We're hedging that if rates come down, you're going to have an opportunity to refinance and the sellers are actually going to subsidize your first one year, two years, or three years of payments. So this is like the perfect storm. I actually do get to go buy my house on sale right now and get an immediate benefit to a lower payment right now. Right. Now those funds come directly from the seller. Correct. Okay. Yep. Buyers can't pay their own buy down. Um, has to come from seller contributions. Um, it can be a lender contribution, but that's that's premium pricing. I would have to bake it into a higher rate. So that's obviously something we don't want to do. Right. We want to get those contributions from the seller. But now, devil's advocate, let's say that rates don't go down in the next several years. If rates go up, well, we locked in before they went up. It is a 30-year fixed. Mm -hmm. So you are going to still be able to buy the home at current market prices. You're going to have a 30-year fixed rate. So if two years from now, if you know everything goes to crap and rates don't come down like all of our analysts are saying they will, mm -hmm. you locked in low and you still had the benefit of a lower monthly payment right. for the first temporary period. Now what happens if you don't utilize all those funds that the sellers contributed? Let's say you refi after the first year. Okay, so they, a buy a, so they buy a, they subsidize a three, two, one buy down. So mm -hmm. your rates subsidize for the first three years and you're able to refinance after 12 months. That's the best scenario out there because on a permanent rate buy down, as soon as you buy that rate down for 30 years, that money just vanished. You have no way to access it or benefit from it. So if you spend 15 grand buying the rate down, and in 12 months the rate comes down automatically and you refi, well, you just paid 15,000 for 12 months lower payment. Mm -hmm. On a temporary buy down, that money actually it's your money, so it gets set in an escrow account that's for your benefit. So if you only if you have 36 months of subsidized payments set aside in escrow and you only use 12 months of it, you have 24 months remaining that you can use either as a principal reduction or use it on closing costs or additional buy downs on your next loan. That's fantastic. It really is. It's it's a can't lose situation. Right. Okay. Um, there's another program that came out with the state, the $20,000 loan, zero payment, zero interest rate. What are you seeing with that? Has that been maxed out yet? They're still available. No, it's it's been a really hot program. Um, there are a couple things. You, you kind of have to fit into a certain box. There's a purchase price limit. So that was set up by the legislature. It's um, administered by Utah Housing. So it's made for new construction first-time home buyers, so you can't use it for purchases over 450000 And as you mentioned, you nailed it. It's 
there was some funky terminology calling it a grant. Mm -hmm. um, it is a interest-free repayable down payment. So they're not going to charge you interest on it, but yeah, you can get extra down payment and you don't need to worry about it until you either sell the home or possibly refinance it is when they're going to want that that money back. Right. That money's set up for perpetuity mm -hmm. so that it's going to benefit Utah citizens for a long, long time because as they give out all of those, I believe it was um, thirteen or 1,400 of those funds that were available, as those get utilized but then paid back, they're going to be become available to new borrowers oh, in yeah. the future. That's very interesting. I wonder if they'll look at increasing that purchase price. It's hard to find a new build at 450, especially here in Salt Lake County. It is, and that kind of segues us into, um, we just heard that a lot of investors are anticipating the conforming loan limits going up next year. So as, just as home prices appreciate, you know, the conforming loan limit is supposed to be set at 750,000 next year. That's huge. It is, it's a lot of, that's a, it's a big purchase. That's a big loan. <laughs> it is. So I think you're naturally gonna see the legislature start deal with you know, as homes continue to be more expensive, obviously this was the first offering of this type in Utah. So I think they'll analyze the results and how many people benefited from it. And I do think you're gonna see those purchase amounts be increased. Awesome, it's okay. What else are we seeing out there? In terms of like economic forecast, I guess that's what I'm thinking. Like, what are you hearing from your experts about where we're going well you know we're in some interesting times where we've got an election coming up here in the mm -hmm. near future um, have to talk about the election not getting political but doesn't matter what affiliation you are or which way you lean um, if there is a party or a, a president that wants to be reelected low interest rates usually help so we really think that during the election we're gonna see you know some rate relief during that time. Mm -hmm. The other thing when we look at historically, you know, the Fed's whole goal with this has been to slow inflation. They've just been trying to stop people from spending money. And the mall parking lots are still pretty full. Mm -hmm. But they've definitely slowed the housing market down a little bit. That's true. So we are seeing inflation numbers come down. They're getting closer to that target rate of 2%. Yes, they are. And the problem is, is that the, the number that they're using to gauge that, they're looking at data that's a month or two old. Just think that that's where we're at currently. And we're actually, it's kind of, I've heard a hockey analogy. Mm -hmm. It's like, we're not a big hockey state, but when you play hockey, you don't skate to where the puck currently is because the puck's moving. You have to skate right. to where the puck is going. So as inflation's dropping, the the criticism is, is that we're skating to where the puck has already been. Right. And it's not taking into account that these, in, you know, the inflation numbers have some momentum moving forward. They are continuing to decline. Right. Which is good news. It is. We don't want to necessarily see deflation, though. I know I've had people reach out and ask me about that. When are we going to see all the prices of eggs, gas, whatever, not just housing, go down? But that indicates even a bigger economic downturn than I think most people would like to see. Right. No one wants to see a recession. There are some some indicators in the market that we could see, you know, a small recession period. And it's natural. It it happens regardless. You know, there's always um, ups and downs in our economy. But if we look back historically, any time during a recession also, the Fed's one main tool to stimulate the economy to you know, give it a little kickstart is they'll stimulate and lower interest rates. Mm -hmm. So we've got a couple of things upcoming in the near future that are just leading us to believe that these rates are not the new norm. We are going to see a decline from where we're at. Well, that'll be good news. That is. For all the home buyers out there and sellers. Yes. So. Um, Lauren, the other thing that we're getting a lot of questions about are assumable loans. Okay. So if someone has a government, an FHA, or a USDA, even a VA 
current loan on their house, they can sell that home and the person buying it can assume their interest rate. So there's a lot of sellers out there that have some great rates. Mm -hmm. I had someone call me today and they were looking at assuming someone that had like a 2.5% interest rate. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So this is new because up until now you couldn't take out another loan to come up with a remainder balance. You had to have that in cash. That has been the challenge is when you assume someone's loan, you can only assume their current loan balance that they owe. And people have a lot of equity. So they might only have a two or three hundred thousand dollar loan balance left on that house, but the home is worth five or six hundred thousand. So it's where do we get the additional two to three hundred thousand dollars to make this seller whole, to give them what they need Correct. to make out of their mm -hmm. house. So unless someone had, you know, a huge savings account or access to a trust fund, it was very hard to, you know, get another mortgage and still assume a loan, but we've got a program now where it's basically a second mortgage and it's purchase money. So it's loan amounts up to 500,000, need just, it's like 10.1% down, just to make things simple, we'll call it 10%. Mm -hmm. So if you need to borrow $200,000 to pay a seller what they want, you would need just barely over 20,000 down. And then you just have a first and a second, and if there's an opportunity in the future when rates come down, you can refinance those back into one, or right. you can just, if it makes sense, to keep both mortgages because of how low that that first one that is. first rate is. Yeah, right. then you just keep that. It's a, just a 30-year fixed term. So that's fantastic news. And as <clears throat> houses sit longer on this, you know. We've got a, a winter months coming up. Mm -hmm. Winter is coming, as Game of Thrones would say. Mm -hmm. So we anticipate homes are, you know, probably gonna. We've got a few months where they're gonna sit a little bit longer, and we're gonna have some great opportunity to really go in and potentially, like we talked about at the beginning, get a house on sale. And wow, if you could take over someone's interest rate in right. the twos or threes, Absolutely. yeah, that's that, huge. If there's one reason to buy right now, and you could find one of these homes. In that type of opportunity what an amazing right that that's life-changing absolutely because we're not going to see those two to three percent ever again that probably not in our lifetime yeah. yep the, so not that we want to see us get into a you know the situation that caused that ever again but right you know it was the government was doing everything they could to make sure that you know the u.s economy was strong and we weathered that pandemic and and they did a good job of it so. right yep absolutely Okay, so what would you say to somebody who's kind of on the fence right now about buying? They're currently renting, they want to buy, but they feel like, you know, maybe it's just not the right time. I'm going to wait for those rates to come down like he's talking about. You know, everybody's situation is different. Um, my job is just to look at all the options. You know, I'm not going to try and talk someone into doing something that's not best for their situation. But one of the realities is, is that... You know, I've heard the phrase, well, what's your interest rate if you're renting? Well, you're not gaining any equity. You're not putting any principal amount into a loan. Basically, you're not living somewhere that's that's a tool for your future economic right. success. Building wealth. Yeah, your home is always the biggest investment most people will ever get. So if you're renting right now, just make sure you're renting because it is your only option. If there is an option to gain equity and gain wealth, every house is a stepping stone. So by you possibly paying a little bit more in payment, I mean you could technically look at it as you're investing in your retirement. Yes, your monthly payment on a home's going to be higher than what your rent is right now. But they're projecting home values are going to increase, not just Utah, nationwide, from six to eight percent next year. So when you start looking at a three hundred thousand, four hundred thousand, five hundred thousand dollar house, if it's going to increase in value, even if it's only six percent that first year, right. look at the amount of money that you could be missing out on. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And when you say missing out on, we're talking about accruing that equity as an asset to them. Correct. If they if they buy now. Yep. Next year, the $500,000 home is going to be 530000 Yes. 
Yep, 530, 540. And that's year after year. That's compounding. Right. So. Yep, that's good news for homeowners. It is. Well, that's, you look at uh, some of the wealthiest people in the United States and their pathway to that wealth was through real estate and home ownership. Absolutely. Well, that's awesome. Do you have anything else for us today, Brady? You know what? Um, I would just say one tool that's been very popular for us right now, it's a promotion that I'm running. We're offering a free refinance. So, hey, I'm going to acknowledge. I think it's great. The rates that yeah. we have right now, they are not the rates you're going to want forever. Right. So what I'm willing to do is if you purchase a house through the end of this year, you are going to have until March of 2025. We call it a free five. Mm -hmm. So you'll be able to get a refinance through me in intercap lending. And I'm not going to charge you any of our um, normal lender fees. So that's our underwriting fee, our processing fee, and our credit report fee. So it's a $1,600 savings. I think, that... <laughs> I think oh. that overwhelming is. Yeah. The studio audience loves the free <laughs> five. I'm excited about that. I'm excited about yeah. it. Yeah. So, no, that's, uh, I mean. So it's not all doom and gloom. This is what I'm taking from this conversation with you today, that there are, first of all, there's options for people who need to buy now to bring that payment down and make it a little more comfortable. These people that are buying now, they're going to be gaining equity just in the next year alone. Not, I mean, including, you know, stay, staying in the home for 10 plus years. Um, yes. So all kinds of good, good news. Yes, no, and the demand for housing right now, it hasn't gone away. We are still at an all-time high. Uh, the only thing that's keeping that demand tempered is just these, just the interest rates. It's right. just the payments, but we have some great solutions. We can overcome those challenges. And even if the market, if this is not the right time for you right now, we still want to provide you with the options just so you're aware of what you could do in the future. So it's never too soon to start looking at right. what your home purchase options are. Yeah, I even agree. if, yeah, if you're in a, you know, in a stage of your life where you're, you tell Lauren and I, hey, this isn't the time, it's not gonna happen for me this year. Well, let's see what, if there's anything standing in your way for next year or right. two years from now. And it's never too early to get those things set in order. You gotta get your credit score where you need it to be. Yep looking at debt to income ratio maybe you're you know self-employed and you need to get two full years of that to have it ready a lot of people don't realize what's necessary to get that loan approval but once they have a conversation with you and you have an opportunity to look at their numbers it puts everything into clear you know a clear focus for them exactly and nothing that we provide is absolute so as you we have conversations on your home purchase options they're fluid. So just because the answer today is, you know what, we might need to make some improvements. Once you make those improvements, the options reset. The deck of cards gets reshuffled. So we provide what's called a pathway to qualification. And if that, you know, if your current numbers aren't where you want them to be, we're going to advise you on, as you said, do we need to get your credit scores up? Where do we need to be income-wise? One of my most popular services is for self-employed people because obviously you don't, when you file your taxes as a self-employed person, you want to minimize your tax exposure, how much income tax you need to pay. But it's a double-edged sword because as you limit your exposure, you also don't show as much income. So it's a little bit more of a process for a self-employed person to make sure that they're showing the right amount of income on their taxes to get the home that they want. Right. We still want to meet those purchase goals that they have. Right. That's awesome. So that's that's always available in the springtime if you're self-employed and you want us to, before your CPA files those taxes, we'd be happy to take a look at them and let you know what, they, what they mean to you in a purchase. So we're going to have a link to your site in the comment section of this podcast. So anyone who's interested in getting a hold of Brady, click on the link. It'll take you directly to his website. And you can get in contact with him there. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, it was great to have you. Thank you for joining us today. Hey.
Anytime I get a chance to speak with one of the best real estate agents in the state uh, of Utah. Thank you. You didn't have to ask. Oh, uh, thanks. Very hard. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, have a wonderful week, and we'll see you soon. Okay. Thank okay, you, we'll Lauren. do it again. Okay, okay. we'll see you. Bye. Bye. Okay, I, we just said bye. No, I liked it. <laughs> we said no. bye to each other. Oh, we're looking at each other. No, I, I, I don't think there was any. I stumbled for just okay, a second bye. on that take. We're no. We're looking at each other's face. That's funny. That's okay. I.